Yeah. We don't really do intros. We're we're pretty, pretty fucking. We tried them for well, a I'm bit. Well, I'm a solo. It's you get a, you're yeah. doing it different. Yeah, I like this. I don't. I don't know how. Uh, like Jeff does a lot of solo stuff. I don't know how y'all do it. Jeff. I have Nimnich. Oh. Nim, Nimnich. Nimnich. Never heard of her. I, uh, I don't know. I can't do solo. Like I need him at least to <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> what I what I figured out with podcasts is like throw all that bullshit out the window when it comes to videos and short form content and stuff. Cause people yeah. are watching this cause they're already engaged. Yeah. Like if they see your face or my face on there and they're not stopping. Right. You, you know, this is a delivered yeah. material. So it's, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. That's what I that's, tell people. Yeah. That's kind of when we got into like, I'd say that's like five or 10 episodes. It was kind of like, well, there's no rules. Right. So, yeah. We, we've, we tried some, I, I mean, like, we're I not like going to do the, the eighties rock music like some of the other guys, but I th- I might use eighties. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I I don't know. Well, the interesting thing about it was uh, is all the stuff that nobody ever got to see because especially in the beginning. I mean, for every for every like hour we would put out, we would probably film four or five hours. Yes, and then edit another like twelve plus hours, and so it's it took a while to kind of find a, a rhythm. I think. Yeah, I mean, we're still. Fine and we're still, we're still, we're just a little bit better. You got to find a stop. Like you're, that's a good thing about podcasts. Like, like if you're making, like if you're following somebody's lead or trying to be the next Joe Rogan mm-hmm. or whatever, people notice. Yeah. Like you just do your fucking thing. Yep. That's yep. what I like. And that's, that's what I liked about it. And when I mentioned earlier, you know, it's kind of funny. It's like people will call into my podcast and they're like, uh, what what months does coyotes fuck? You know, <laughs> you're yeah. like February, fucking next week. They're like, hey, join my podcast. We're yeah. going to talk about coyotes breeding. You know, and I'm like, you got to be shitting me, man. <laughs> Everybody's always a uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Specialist after a yeah. little bit of time of research. I will say, I think that's the the most interesting thing about. I think probably both of us feel this way. Is neither of us want to be doing this, but they, but the information's so bad out there where you're like. I guess I have to say something. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I love chatting with people, but at the same time, it's like I got to stop you. I use eighties music. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking dickhead. I had to go. I had to go back to my podcast. It's, I don't know for. Are we doing it now? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> so give me some rules. Am I allowed to cuss? And because I've already like. Oh, there's no rules. Free free reign so, here. We had yeah. Clay Reed on. I, mean, come on. Yeah. I had to. I had to go back to my podcast and listen to my intro because Wade's <laughs> talking shit. Like he's worse than I am. Well, it's kind of like I. I don't know. It's weird because I'm like I listen to a, like a, a metric shit ton of different podcasts and videos, and he does yeah. too. And it's kind of like I almost that's that's the thing I always kind of loved about Rogan is he just like just it just starts go except yeah. for the except except for the ads. Yeah. That's why we don't we don't even do ads because well, it's I mean, like I was I was so, listening to Rogan today. And or yesterday, and he had the guy on that does soft white underbelly, and you know it's his little intro that they do. Yeah. And then he's just like, "What? What got you here? Like there wasn't no hey everybody, there wasn't nothing. He just looked at this guy and yeah. he's like, what in the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. You know? So I like that. I like. I mean, everybody's got their style. It just, for some reason, it just seems as if. And maybe you started it. Who I knows? Didn't, I didn't start shit, man. Predator hunting, hunting in general, uh, shooting, they all start with some sort of rad rock music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my I, I was a pioneer of badass 80s music, you dick. Well, there's the other side of it is I think a lot of the, we do the podcast with other people in here. Yeah. Um, almost none of them are like podcast people or right, or yeah. even like microphone. Like they're, yeah. they're already so nervous. So what we found very quickly is we would just start and yeah just they'd start be talking some, sometimes it'd be like 45 minutes before we actually started the podcast yeah, yeah like a while ago i didn't know we started i'd have been i'd have been nervous as hell i don't like microphones i don't like cameras i don't like yeah. tv i don't like people <laughs> hey you're in for somebody company. that was in tv for would you say 16 years yeah that seems kind of odd <laughs> I, i'm odd man you've heard me say it before like me and you've had some pretty deep heart-to-heart talks you yeah. know riding in the truck late at night and like, man, I don't want to be like, when I first started the industry, um, 
I always wanted to be a HS hunter specialties prime time guy. I wanted to shoot big white tails on prime time bucks. And I remember I was accidentally found. It wasn't nothing special. And when they found me, I, you know, it took about a year to go from a contract killer to a full time guy. Mm. And I remember about a week or two after I was hired full time, I was laying in bed and I looked up at the ceiling. I was like, what in the fuck have I done? <laughs> Cause I had started a, I had started, I've always been an entrepreneur ever since I've been little. And I've always started business. I've had my own businesses ever since I was out of high school. And I'd started a really successful construction company and it, it was starting to fall and not the, the business, but the marketing or the market, the housing market. And I, I was just like, you know, and I had a partner. I was like, there ain't room for two of us anyway. Mm-hmm. And this TV deal come up. I was like, I'm going to do this, you know? And I was just like, what? And the, because them whitetail guys are ruthless and they all wear fancy pants and I, and they're all my buddies. <laughs> so I don't care if they're mad at me or not for telling the truth. But I mean, it's, and I was a predator guy. So, um, I, I hear a lot, like, you know, they used to call me the black sheep and now I'm like, I'm not the black sheep. I'm the wolf, you know? Yeah. I don't do the whole, um, but I've always been the guy that was vocal and I've always been the guy at sales meetings and marketing meetings and whatever that was usually in trouble. Um, not for telling them what I thought or what I wanted to think or what I wanted to see. I, I was always trouble in trouble with my delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody that knows it's probably watching this that knows me. Um, my delivery sucks sometimes, but, but that's what honesty does for people. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been I, accused of that. More than once. Well, I mean, it's just <laughs> no, like... No, you're just a dick. <laughs> well, I, I, well, how how are... Before we go any further in this, you need to really put the explicit bar across the deal. Because, like, I, my filter, like, if we're going to have a conversation, I, I can't stop it. Right. And I remember, like, I, I was, you know, several years ago, five or six years ago, is when I got my first complaint about my mouth with a cuss word. And I'm like... You know, they're, and they're like, you know, my, my kids are watching this. Why do you have, like, you said ass on TV. I'm like, man, when I was four or five years old, I remember watching Benny Hill chase naked chicks around the college showers Mm -hmm. on on public television. Mm -hmm. And it's just like everything else, you know, I'm not trying to desensitize anything or anyone. I'm just being me. And, and that's one, one reason I got off TV Um, there's a huge demographic on TV that still watch it. There's a huge demographic on TV that still buys products as a businessman and an entrepreneur. I need to sell people stuff. Um, I take a lot of pride in being one of the only guys in the hunting industry, uh, about being, uh, honest about that. Um, I don't know which camera or what, but I'm trying to sell you guys (laughs) shit. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. Um, but that's not a bad thing. Because how you, that's the only thing probably I've delivered consistently throughout my career that I can be proud of. I've always been honest. I've lost a lot of money being honest. Um, There's some products, like when I worked for Hunter Specialties, there's some products that was really cool and I thought that was cool, but ended up not being, and I just kiboshed. And one reason I left Hunter Specialties is because me and Gerald Stewart designed an electronic collar for them. And, uh, I was flying all over the country. Like a lot of people think I was just a coyote killer, but I mean, I was flying all the, all over the country to these big box buyers tables, just tables like this, visiting, selling people. And I sold a million and a half dollars alone to Cabela's of these callers that was supposed to deliver on a certain date. And they, they took the product after we uh, did the scope of work on the features and the feature set and, kind of got it to work really good they changed some stuff and then it wouldn't work at all like this thing was broke Mm -hmm. um but we had to deliver to cabela's because if you sell to cabela's and don't deliver it's a bad check mark on you and so anyway um they were gonna put my name on this son bitch and i was just like no way and i talked to gerald and gerald's like uh, he, he's like my dad. Gerald Stewart's like my dad. Uh, taught me how to record wildlife. Ha- taught me how to find sound pirates. Um, edit sounds. I've got sounds at home with Johnny talking on them. So I feel like I grew up in the industry learning from Johnny and Gerald. And um, 
you know, he just told me you got to do what's right. And I know that sounds like a bullshit story, you know, trying to make be dramatic and stuff on this podcast, but that's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I quit um, to do dog soldier. And at the time I was already branding dog soldier as an apparel company because I I finagled my way in as a as a businessman. I made a move with Hunter Specialties because they had they had made some bad decisions. And I said, okay, so if you're going to do it this way, I want to do it this way. If I don't compete with you, let me, cause at the time, every idea I had, every call idea, I was under contract, severe contract. And I mean, you know, if, if I sent a, a meme to you, it was actually property of theirs. Everything I sent, everything email, I mean, it was, it was a bad deal. And uh, so I told him, I said, well, if you're going to do this, how about we change my contract around? And as long as I don't directly compete with Hunter Specialties, let me do some other stuff to make up for some economic downfall that you guys are putting me through, which was a pay cut. And uh, they're like, okay. So I started branding dog soldiers and apparel company. So I already started branding <laughs> it. Um, and then when I decided to pull the trigger, you know, I was already set in motion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know what rabbit hole we just got down in, but I like it. It was a good one. What about what year was it when you started with Hunter Specialties? Like oh. when I remember getting Hunter Specialties DVDs, watching Steve Kreiner, yeah. clean shaven, Baby shoot cows. Yeah, <laughs> it don't get no better than that, man. No, they used to make fun of me for saying it don't get no better than that and fried chicken. I still say fried chicken. <laughs> I fucking love that saying. Me and my little girl was sitting watching uh, a TV episode right after I was full time on Hunter Specialties and. And I shot a coyote, and I said, look, Zoe, I smoked him. And she goes, like, fried chicken, Dad. Well, the next day, I'm I'm hunting in Missouri with a cameraman, and I shoot this coyote, and I'm like, fried chicken, baby. And it just <laughs> stuck. Yeah. And I could not say it. it yeah. Like, it wasn't on purpose. Like, it was just stuck. Mm-hmm. But I started Hunter Specialties. When I started Hunter Specialties, Zoe wasn't born yet, and she's 16 or 16 now. So probably 18 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a DVD before that that nobody's ever seen. Uh, I still actually have uh, copies of the files. It was called Calling Dogs with Steve Kreiner. Not shaky, but real. Yeah. And uh, the reason why it said not, or it said uh, shaky, but real. The reason why is because I was self-filming everything. I, I did kind of the Randy Anderson platform. Um, back then, we were talking heads, me and Randy. Um so I was talking head. I'd film other people shooting coyotes when I called in, called them in, you know. And uh, I remember one time Tony Tebby was giving me shit on Predator Masters. <laughs> That's what and, everybody did on Predator Masters. He's like, oh, that, that footage is shaky and shit, you know. And I'm like, yeah. whatever, dude. <laughs> I mean, I remember Byron South. He's like, and that's what people listen to this. Like, I've done this a long time. Yeah. And. You know, I've had good arguments with Teddy. I've had good arguments with Byron. I've had good arguments with uh, Vic Carlson. I've had good arguments with... I've had an argument or two with Major Boddicker, but me and him are pretty tight. Um, we're really kind of all pretty tight in our own little way. I remember Byron told me, he's like, Kreiner, don't worry about that kid. He said, oh, any promotions, even bad promotions, good promotion. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I just... And, and that's where... I know where we was going a while ago, you know, like, like when I first started cussing, like I just said, hell with it. You know, I was just like, yeah. I just want to be myself. Yeah. And I, you know, man, this is like, it's 2023 now. Mm-hmm. Like if you think if I say shit yeah. or even drop a big OF bomb, if it's going to affect your kid, you got another fucking thing coming, man. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we run the same thing on a podcast <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, yeah, this isn't the Facebook group. Yes, we have strict rules on the Facebook. Oh, group, I know, but this I is, know about your rules. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a podcast, <laughs> and if you're worried about your kids, what they're going to hear, uh, don't let them listen to it. Yeah, it's well, again, it's yeah. like it, I, it, I just I don't I don't understand people. Like again, this is 2023. Like people cuss. Yeah, and and <laughs> and you know, people think I'm doing it for to be cool. Right. Um, I, Shit, I've been I've been a potty mouth ever since I can remember. I don't. I wish it was cool. If it was cool, I would be way better than everybody else. Said it. Um, well, there's there's the aspect of especially on a podcast long form, like when you're just because you're kind of like you're not think like you're like long form talking and yeah. telling stories. It's really hard to catch yourself sometimes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't I don't want it. I, 
That's the whole point of the podcast. I don't yeah. want it to be filtered. I want you to tell me whatever you want to tell me. Yeah, I'm a conversationalist is how mm-hmm. I look at it. Um, a lot of people think that, like, a lot of people think that Steve Kreiner wants to be the... Oh, that was... Sorry, I'm... I didn't even say fuck yet. <laughs> that was... That was cu- no, honestly... No, bullshit. No. No. I have, a, I have the ADHD. I literally no didn't shit. even... I was randomly hitting the button. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't even touching the button. I was pulling up on the button and it went off. So. He, said, he said, enough of your body mouth. Son. Yeah, enough, enough, enough of your bullshit, man. Beep, beep, beep. In my 80s music. Yeah. yeah. In my rings and my tattoos. and. Oh, shit. gosh, Dale. You know, it, I don't even know where he's going now. I don't remember where. No, that it was just long form podcast. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, um, a lot of people think that like I set out in the world to be like the best coyote hunter in the world. Um, that's not what I set out to be. I just happened to be very successful at calling coyotes and it w- didn't have nothing to do with the equipment I was using, which I've always been very vocal about. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably, if you give me a day to figure out how to make a sound, I could probably find 20 things in this room. I can make a coyote call out of ex- excluding your coyote call. <laughs> um, yeah. And I always tell people you can call coyotes with everything, no matter if it's the dog soldier hand calls or Fox pros or whatever. Um, in my podcast, like when I'm getting down to the informational part of it, I, woodsmanship is my thing. Mm-hmm. Like my daddy's side of the family is from the Ozark mountains on the South side of the border of Missouri and Arkansas. My mama's side is on the North side. Um, so if they were inbred, I don't know, which was good. <laughs> Because everybody's thinking that right now, so I might as well say it. Um, but, you know, we were hunters. When I grew up, I grew up dirt poor. Where'd y'all grow up at? Uh, Buffalo, Missouri is where I grew up at. And uh, dirt poor. And But we didn't know it at the time. Man, I hunted and fished. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm in the bar business. My grandpa was in the bar business back then and had a tavern, and my dad was a truck driver. And I hunted a lot, though. All I did back then, you could grab your 22 and walk for miles and miles and miles and all day long. Nobody worried about you. Nobody picked you up. Mm-hmm. Nobody, damn sure nobody tried to rob you. Cause if you seen a little hillbilly kid walking across the <laughs> gravel road with a 22 and you stopped to try to pick his ass up, you're getting capped. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to hold my 22 sideways <laughs> like they do in the big cities, you know? <laughs> I had, a, I had a good childhood, and when I got in this industry, I remember the first time I ever wanted to hunt for a living, uh, we were watching the news, and my grandma, um, I told her I wanted to be a professional hunter because they were paying back then. This was damn near 40 years ago. They were paying people to shoot prairie dogs in Colorado, and, uh, you know, I thought, damn, I can make a living hunting yeah. and killing shit. Of a deal I right do there. Yeah, so that's kind of where it happened. I, I, I you know... um. I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm patriotic, so I'm very vocal about my past. You know, I was in the delayed entry program for the Marine Corps for 700 and, or excuse me, 361 days, I think. You have to ship by 363. Um, I got kicked out of high school two days before I graduated, and the teacher took my credit. So I didn't go to the Marine Corps. Had buddies go. Had some buddies. Didn't come back. Um, it's a fact of life. Um never really done anything so i think that's why i took up the entertainment business and i and i call it the entertainment business because i've always tried to be center of attention i've always tried to put on the best show um this is just a conversation but probably secretly my head like i'm trying to do the best podcast that your people have ever heard not meaning to um i rode bulls for a long i've always been a biker cowboy um I love it when people say, oh, you know, you're a biker one day and you're a cowboy the next. Well, yeah, no shit. I'm multitasked. Mm-hmm. I can be a badass and a badass motherfucker. Yeah. And um, my mom married a biker and I grew up around bikers and I learned the lifestyle and it ain't like you see on Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> but when I started riding bulls, I wasn't good at it. And I had uh, Steve Kreiner, the inner Steve Kreiner, like, we have to fix this. Mm-hmm. You know, like, dude, you suck. And I've always been honest about everything. So I'm like, so I started fighting bulls and I was very good at it. Very good. And, uh, when I, when I quit about 22, I started getting hurt pretty bad. I was pretty much a walking concussion and the doctor's like now or never dude. We'd be at a party drinking beer and a buddy would walk up and just slap me in the back of the head. Just see me knocked out. I mean, just like that. And, uh, 
So I've always been in the entertainment business and I've always been very vocal with this TV deal. You know, I'm, I'm an entertainer. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert coyote hunter. I learn every day. Um, I'm not an extra expert whitetail killer. Um, I learn every day. Um, I, you know, I've killed more coyotes than Parvo. I've killed more deer than blue tongue. I mean, I'm just a hillbilly kid that's killed a lot of shit Mm -hmm. and, and you just improvise. Um, you start off broke as a kid, you want better and hopefully your, your inner monster takes you to places that you can be better. And this whole TV deal was an accident. I didn't like set out to be on TV, even though I always wanted to, um, it just happened. And then when I started TV, I was like, there's, there's more to this equation. It's not, you know, yeah. Did I like the attention? Hell yeah. I like the attention. Did I get jealous when I seen other people like me on TV? Hell yeah. Especially if they succeeded something that I didn't, that's human nature. Yeah. Um, but I started following, I didn't even graduate high school. So I started at the early years of 20 something, you know, with Hunter Specialties, I started following the marketing directors around and I really loved manufacturing. Like that was cool. Mm -hmm. And I learned the processes and I learned how to sell. If I did make something or design something, I learned how to sell it. Um, and really quick I learned that the big picture was different now if I talk about the big picture there was no rhyme or reason for that (laughs) (laughs) so going back real quick uh there there's gonna definitely be people watching this or listening to this that weren't around for the the big explosion in predator hunting on tv Mm -hmm. and all too many times people's perception of what it's like to be a person on TV is very, very much not the reality. Yeah. Like people don't understand like, well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure some of the guys are like maybe still catching some shows on TV are like, Oh, that'd be awesome. But you also got to understand like the amount of work that goes into that. Uh, and the fact that it's, you're the only person I've ever seen. Like, again, tell the truth. Like I'm, I'm an entertainer. Like I'm, you're selling a product. Oh you know, yeah. Most of the time you're selling multiple products, but the main product you're selling is yourself. Yeah. Like you're selling yourself. So you, it's your entertainer. Essentially. You, wanna, you want me to tell you a dirty story? Sure. Like you're going to get a lot of, <laughs> like I'll get a lot. I might even get a phone call over this one. Meh, who cares? So when I first started dog soldier, listen to this shit. <laughs> that may not, that sounds ornery. Okay. So when I first started dog soldier, you talk about promoting yourself and I, and it is very, it's, it's common marketing. If, if you're supporting a brand, Dog Soldier, um, in my case, you have to market it. It ain't about everybody else. It's about you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't blame all these guys on Facebook and stuff being about themselves. I, I totally can't blame them. Um, when I first started Dog Soldier at SHOT Show, I had made a deal. Um, I'd made a deal with Fox Pro, actually. And I filmed, you know. You know, I'm spending almost 500 a day on camera guys' expenses and everything else, and and uh, I wasn't running Texas or or any high quantity areas. So I mean, I was three days deep in an episode usually, and uh, you know, I've I've filmed three episodes I think using Fox Pro products, and in Kansas I had I had a mishap, and uh, I. I I, I don't, I'm not downplaying anybody or I'm not saying anybody's, the products are bad, but I had a mishap and, um, you know, I called Abner or text him or something. I can't remember now. And I'm like, Hey, I need, I'm in Kansas, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm broke down. Um, I need something now. <clears throat> never got it. So I went to the store and bought another one, which was totally cool. I never really want anything for free. If you ask most of my sponsors I've had in the past, I bought my shit. I didn't want it for free. Um, and there's a reason behind that, but anyway, um, I was pretty well ghosted and, uh, a couple years ago, me and Mike were into it on the phone and, uh, I brought up that and he's like, well, we were, we learned real fast that you was all about yourself. Well, you're goddamn right. (laughs) Your show. (laughs) Like, if you guys are watching this and you're thinking about getting in the business, you have to focus on certain things. And for one, the main thing is yourself. Mm-hmm. 
whether and and the re and to get back to that real quick the re i said what are you talking about he goes well you had that big jacked up wrap truck and it had your face on it and that right there told us all and i'm like yeah, I didn't like the face either. And if you remember a week later, it didn't have my face on it because I, I told the rap sponsor it was a surprise. And I said, yeah, we got to take my face off of it. First of all, I didn't want my face on it. Mm. And Dog Soldier, when it first started, was supposed to be Dog Soldier, the brand, not Steve Kreiner, the Dog Soldier. That was an accident. And um, I just, I, I, I never shook that off, man. Yeah. And, and honesty sucks. And when you're honest about stuff, people that, don't like it sometimes. There's going to be people watch this podcast and they're going to be like, ah, Steve Kreiner. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that. He's not my guy, which is totally cool with me. Yeah. That's another thing. If you get in this business, you got to be totally cool with it. But if you're promoting yourself, um, there's ways to do it and ways to do it right. Um, and taking care of yourself and believing in yourself and making sure that the people you support take care of you is mm -hmm. the most important thing. And that's what I see lacking in the market right now. And every time I mention it, people think I'm going crazy or people think that I'm pissed off because the new guy's going to pass me up. They're not passing me. That's my mindset. Like mm -hmm. if I stop to look behind me, I'm going to trip and fall. So, and you know me, we've had these talks. I mean, my mind is always out front running as fast as I can and everybody's behind me. And I expect them to to think the same stuff yeah. if they give me a chance and listen to me and talk to me i could i i try to explain that to them sometimes it's impossible on facebook yeah you know one time a kid started a, a group called dog soldier <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it was a predator hunting group and i messaged him i'm like yeah this can't do it i said can we and then he changed it to predator <sighs> soldier <laughs> and i'm like man i'm a businessman i'm an expert in copyright infringement um due to gerald's training I said, uh, copyright infringement in normal people terms is if, if your copyright confuses somebody else on another copyright, there's infringement. And I was set up. It was funny. The guy that turned me on all this and, you know, helping me get in contact with this kid, the kid blocked me from the page. It went from like 200 members to like 6,000 overnight. They just beat the dog shit out of me, mm -hmm. which was fine. Um, you know, kind of like when, you know, Les sues people over his eyes all the time. It's kind of like with that, you know, we all give less shit for his eyeballs. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, it's just there's a lot to this business. Yeah. And I wish people would learn it and do it right because if you're a big call manufacturer and if you're doing 13 or 14 million a year and you're growing your business and depending on all these people doing it for a, $160 box of parts. That's just wrong in my eyes. Yeah. My guys are paid, which there's only two. I'm not a rich guy, but they're cutting everything. They're, they make money. Um, but the good thing I do with my guys, you know, if, if you remember before I started legend precision optics, um, Sterling was a really huge player on helping me put that, that model together. You know, there was royalty bases, there's payment. Um, but like, I'm going to make money off that. I'm going to feed my kids. I'm going to pay child support. I'm going to buy my Harleys. I'm going to live. You got to take care of the people that take care of you. Yep. And with that particular model, I couldn't do it by myself. But the good thing about it is if you remember when I was doing the dog soldier scope with Axion, which I've never been a, a if you've noticed, and I'm sure you have, I've never been a big sponsor jumper. So like um, when Bushnell or Bushnell Burris dropped us years ago, like the first three years after dog soldier, they dropped us. They were going to do a predator quest scope and that's cool. I still used a Burris. And then I was approached by a company to help them design a line. I still use Burris until we got the line ready. And then I switched over to Axion. Um, I had, I had skin in the game. It was my product. Mm -hmm. And um, if you notice, the, the Dog Soldier scope is really awesome scope. They still sell it, I think. Um, I still got some in stock. I mean, they're awesome scopes. And even though they say five-year warranty, I would always go over their head and say it's got a Steve Kreiner warranty. If you don't like it, 
you know, my funny saying is you can throw that bitch off the Golden Gate Bridge, but if your dumbass swims to the bottom and grabs it, send it back and I'll ship you another one if it's broke. Yeah. Um, Sterling was uh, doing some Accufire stuff then. And, you know, Sterling is like, you. he would be like, hey, you do you care? I'm like, no. Like, if you don't want to use that scope and you want to use another scope, give her hell. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not a bully. I and I and me and Sterling's, um, we used to call it boxed in. Like I'm not boxing you in. And uh, cause one time me and him got into it, it was funny over a white tail deer. <laughs> it's like I feel like I'm getting boxed in. I'm like Sterling, and you know we yell at each other all the time. We're really good friends, and uh, I think that's how you got to be. Yeah. And I can't sleep at night growing my business on free labor. Yeah. And I have a super huge problem with that. And I always bring it up and I don't mean to, um, you know, that, um, I wish I, if I was doing $13 million a year or 14, there'd be a lot of people well yeah. off yeah. because they deserve it. And, and I feel like grassroots marketing used to mean something grassroots marketing or guerrilla marketing is what it's called in, in, in marketing terms. Um, it used to really mean something, but now it's just like, it's just out the door. Yeah. I, I just, I, it's just weird to me. That's why I don't do much of it. I don't have my regulators. I still have some nobody even knows. It, it's just friends, family. We all stick together. We hunt, talk, mouth. Some of them I haven't seen for years now. And they're actually family, family like blood. And, and that's cool. Um, you know, you don't see them on Facebook all the time. Like, it, it aggravates me when somebody asks, um, and I'm going to steer away from the predator hunting industry because I don't want people to think I'm picking on people, and I damn sure don't want Mike or anybody calling me, cussing me, because I'm not wired that way no more, and I'll tell them to get fucked. <laughs> Which I did last time we did, but... <laughs> um, it, It's just, it's... If somebody says, what's the best rifle? I want people to say, Steve Kreiner, Legend Precision, you know, Legend Maker uh, Precision Rifles. Mm-hmm. I want them to say that because they bought it and they yeah. believe that, not because I gave it to them. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, uh, that's, that's where I'm at. Yeah. You know, kind of like, you know, with your podcast, you want people to say it's the best podcast and whether you're trying to be the best or not, you are. It's, we're wired that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you want people to say that because it is, not because you like. Yeah. I think you have the best podcast in the predator hunting industry, and probably your top five in what I've watched in the or listened to in the hunting industry. And I'm not saying that because I'm here. I'm saying that because when we, in we talked about it earlier when you was put. I'm a very honest person. And we're friends. If I lied to you, it would be. You know, I was concerned about the wood on the wall. I was concerned yeah. about a lot of things, and and you did it. You did, I mean, you processed the information, you turned it into a positive and you did it. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm saying that. I'm not saying it because I'm here. This, you've done a hundred of these things probably. And I've, this is the first time I've been here. And I probably wouldn't be here now, but I'm stuck in the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I come here for <laughs> Brooks cooking. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a pretty good enticer to get people on the podcast. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like Stearman, he's on his honeymoon that he yeah. forgot, you know. I'm like, hey, let's go eat a steak with Brooke. We never say let's go eat with Wade. <laughs> so, I mean, kind of getting back into that for a minute. What Again, we'll have listeners that aren't even aware of all this stuff. So... What you seen was a, a explosion in predator hunting popularity on TV. Mm-hmm. And then all these shows came on, which was, I mean, in the back of the, the time of that, it was great. It was, it was where it was pre Facebook groups is where you went to get information. And like we all had our favorites and, I, you know, I'm same as you. I'm not saying this because you're, you're here, but I always enjoyed probably yours the most because you actually explained shit. Whereas like the rest of them were buy my shit pretty doctored buy this shit here's a bunch of codes or well depending on what show here's some codes getting shot you know whereas yours it was there was definitely more information and you know that's where everybody went other than the forums which Mm -hmm. i hated the fucking forums because when i came on and started getting super inquisitive about uh successful and unsuccessful stands other than watching tv shows or maybe catching one of y'all at a show because yeah. that's a whole thing. It used to be a thing that's 
not so much anymore. You just didn't have nowhere to ask questions. I remember doing seminars with 500 people watching. Yeah. I would, that, that's something I, I wish would come back. I, I do too. Pers- personal, like I tell everybody, I want to touch, feel, smell. And I know that sounds weird sometimes, but <laughs> like I want to be there. I want to yeah. be part of it. I want to, f- I want to hear it. I want to feel it. Um, it just, uh, you know, um, it, it's, it's good entertainment, but it's good information. And, and yeah. the social media aspect of life has taken that plum out. Yeah. Um, it's, it's single-handedly been one of the best things that's ever happened and one of the worst things that's ever happened. Yeah. And, and I, I will tell you right now, I would give up, uh, and we can talk about it a little later, but I'm starting another business. Um, but I would give up every one of my businesses, even my bar. I would go back to being dirt poor if somebody, Now I'm not saying if it happens tomorrow because the government shuts it down, so don't hold me to this, but <laughs> if I could make a deal with the devil, I would. I would give it all up. And, and, and the reason I'm saying, I probably wouldn't have said that 20 years ago because 20 years ago I was young, and everybody's young, whether, you know, whether you are, are young if you're young in something okay i was young in the industry and i thought it was more i wanted more i wanted to make it more that's my problem i'm 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 a natural um thinker when it comes to growing sales how do i make this more how to make it better um so if i knew then what i knew now i wouldn't be here at this table i i I'm not a very religious person. I believe in God. That's about it. Um, But I would do anything to get people to believe me with that because that's very important. And and if a lot of people, um, I'm not very active on Facebook besides pictures anymore or mouthing people. Um, You know, I got the Dog Soldier Predators app, so I'm really personal there. A lot of people, there's, I don't know, three or 4,000 subscribers. And and they, they hear the deep Steve Kreiner like, I am mm-hmm. really, truly honest and passionate about getting things back to the way they were. Yeah. That means more to me than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I like selling shit to people. That's how I make my living. Um, it's no different than a gas station selling a, a gas. Like, you know, my grandpa always said, if we trade money with our friends, we never go broke. So that's what I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to be personal with my people. Mm-hmm. Um I look at the people not as fans, but as people. Yeah. And uh, I would trade anything. I made a huge mistake at Hunter Specialties. I am not responsible whatsoever for Facebook. I'm not responsible. I'm not saying that, telling this story. But I remember one time sitting at a pro staff meeting. Once a year, we'd all get together at the farm in Kirksville. This was when Facebook first started. Nobody was using Facebook in the hunting industry for a marketing tool. And, um, I gave a little presentation because Hunter Specialties did recognize really quick that I was very, um, I was very smooth with my marketing and sales. I mean, I remember one time, you know, a Bass Pro buying table. And at the time this was a hundred percent true. I said, Johnny Stewart has the bre- the best library available. Now for all you guys that are get on, going to get online and <laughs> going great. Well, Steve Kreiner said this and. Back then it was true. Fox Pro <gasps> had dog shit sounds. Everybody had dog shit sounds. Johnny Stewart was the bomb. Mm-hmm. And uh, the buyer says, are you saying that just because you're trying to sell me this call? I said, no, Google it. And he's like, never heard that one before. I said, I'm honest. I Google it. Just Google best sound library for predator hunting. Mm-hmm. See what happens. That's how you're going to sell that shit. And I remember sitting at this predator hunting or not predator hunting pro staff meeting. And I did a presentation on social media and how good it was for marketing, how good it would be for sales, how good it would be for a fan base to be in one spot. Mm -hmm. Used to me and Al, when we worked together, we would watch a Fred Ackler episode from a year before. And we'd call each other. Did you see what Fred just did? That damn idiot. (laughs) And, so we would we would do that, but now everything's real time. And mm-hmm. I told him, I said, this is great. Because when we kill coyotes or deer or turkeys, like people are right there with us. This is going to be the best thing next to Jesus, you know. And 
I remember after my presentation, Dave stood up and he mandated every pro staffer to get Facebook, start growing the fan base, and he mandated and appointed me to make sure all them old bastards figured it out and knew how to work it. Next next thing you know, you got Philip Vanderpool, Rick White, all these old timers. They got Facebook. <laughs> and Facebook's the devil, man. Yeah. It's very um whew, I've seen some destruction happen. Yeah. I've destructed on Facebook before. Yeah. Like everybody has at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, um, and not only people watch it and they're like, oh, I'd love to have, get circling back to the TV business. I would love to have that life. You know, everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know. Yeah. Um, what I've done really well here lately is I just swipe left. And I'm getting Sterling, getting, his Sterling's doing really good. If somebody annoys me, friend or not, swipe left. And that's the most positive thing for me to do because then I, I start doing podcasts and bitching more than giving people good information. Yeah. But I am trying to teach people here right now. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, the predator hunting industry, um, when it blew up, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, coyotes were running the call everywhere. People were thirsting for knowledge. Yes. And then all of a sudden you started seeing like people would call into HS and be like, man, I'm killing 25 coyotes a weekend on video, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you could just see it happening. In slow motion for me, because this is my life. This mm-hmm. is my business. And, and one, you know, I've never reinvented the wheel. You know more about custom rifles probably than I do. And I've built over 150 custom rifles in the last three years. But I do it well, and I'm still learning every day. Optics business. You probably know more about optics than I do. But I'm a good marketing guy, and I'm a good manufacturer. Calls, I didn't reinvent the wheel. The dog soldier hand calls just happened to be put together very well by me and tuned by me because I know what I'm doing. There's not a company that's matching me on that because mm-hmm. most of them that own these, you know, e-call companies, they can't blow a hand call if they were born with that son bitch in their mouth. Yeah. Um, that's why I was in that market. And I start seeing this stuff. I swipe all the time left because I start seeing these guys, especially these pro staffers, if you're not using my how that term has changed, <laughs> Jesus, greatly. I, thought, I remember when it used to be. Did you hear so and so got pro staff? Like, Holy shit. shit! He's getting a check. Yeah, he's getting a check. Man. And then nowadays it means absolutely dick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I seen one last week. It's like if you ain't using this and you ain't using this, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. No, guys. I I don't care. <laughs> like I'm not saying this mean, but I don't care. If you guys ever buy a scope, a gun, a call from me whatsoever, I don't care. I know I have good products. They're going to sell. I know my marketing is good. They're going to sell. What I'm more interested in is being 100% honest and making better woodsmen out of people, whether it comes to shooting, hunting, coyotes, deer, turkeys, whatever. I'm from the Midwest. Um, If I knew the numbers as a businessman was so low in the predator hunting industry at the time, I would have been a whitetail guy. Yeah as a businessman and still mm-hmm. been a coyote guy, but nobody had ever knew me. Right. And, and that's the thing people can't like, they want to like, I'm on Facebook and I got this. I, I see these guys giving each other nicknames now. <laughs> They're like so-and-so predator and in parentheses, their name. Yeah. I'm like, and that's probably going to piss them off if they watch this, but like, and I've been guilty of some weird shit like that. Um, <laughs> but I grew up and I'm, um, <laughs> it's just weird how, yeah. how things have changed. Yes. And I just want to be a hundred percent honest with people and make good woodsmanship, uh, make good woodsmen out of them, teach them woodsmanship because from a marketing standpoint and a businessman standpoint, a hundred percent transparency. If I teach people how to be better coyote hunters, better deer hunters, better long range shooters, no matter what, they're going to buy my shit. It's mm-hmm. that simple. Mm-hmm. But the market is so diluted. Like, you can't even ask what the best anything is now. Yeah. Yeah. Without some kind of bullshit, because everybody answering has got that deal on their profile. And I'm not taking that away from them. It's, it's something you should be proud of. And I and I hope you are proud of it, but just use it right. That's yeah. all I want people to do. Yeah. And it don't matter. You know, I mean, uh, 
like I was telling Brooke a while ago, you know, like if I'm forgotten tomorrow, I'm good with it. Um, when I was bullfighting, I used to be one of the best in the Midwest and, uh, you know, the IPRA and ACRA, you couldn't go nowhere without hearing my name. Um, freestyle bullfighting, it didn't matter. I was there. I guarantee you less than a year after I quit, I was forgotten. Yeah. So I'm, I'm used to it. And, uh, Maybe I won't. Brooke says I won't, so she ain't gonna forget me. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's so, all I care about, I guess. So when uh, all the, so when social media really took off, mm-hmm. you know, you've seen the huge explosion. Which, I mean, it's it's a huge domino effect. It, y'all, all y'all guys got on TV, it, which I don't know who was first or whatever, but you know, more shows popped up. And then right there at the same time, social media started coming on board. And then at some point, all these companies figured out, <laughs> hey, I just throw a little bit of shit these people away. They'll fucking literally fight people tooth and claw for oh, a goddamn discount. Fucking right, man. And then, you know, what, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, some people blame, like, they don't know the, the whole story on it. And is what had happened was these big companies, who used to sponsor all y'all shows because that's mm-hmm. used to be how they made sales. Yeah, they don't know more. Uh, y'all, y'all worked all the time between filming your TV show, and then they people don't understand this. Back in the day, you had to go travel and go do shows and seminars and all kinds you of shit. You had to work for it. Yes, you were basically most time by contract. You were, you know, you worked year round. Like it's people's perception of. And I'm sure it's a little bit different nowadays, but back then people's perception of people on TV was totally wrong. It's like, oh, these guys, the guys who are out there doing TV, they're getting it. Whether you agree with their tactics or whatever, all of them had a pretty good work ethic, work ethic because yeah. they literally had, they were beholden to the people that sponsored their shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we worked for it. Um, yeah. It's, I do want to say like, we're probably quite a ways in, but if you guys are watching this, like, don't think we're dicks talking about this. Like, give us a chance to explain. Yeah, give us yeah. a chance to explain this and learn. Like, I, if I could just get people to sit down mm-hmm. and just listen to what I have to say or what anybody in the industry my age has to say about it, they could learn a lot and they'll exceed. They'll excel. Yeah. Um. You know, used to we had to work for it. The field staff guys were shirt and hat guys, and they worked for discounts and. There was like one in this area and one in that area. Yeah. Well, when so Hunter Specialties, when me and when me and Gerald started that um, electronic call or the design, Hunter Specialties designed uh, decided to discontinue the Preymaster, which was really epic for a junk ass call. I mean, yeah. it was great. Yeah. You know, it worked. It was one of the first wireless remote calls. You yep. know, aside from the Fox Pro, it was pretty cool. And um, he called Michael Jing, which is the owner of Icotech, and said, hey, we're discontinuing the Preymaster. And Michael's like, well, what do you, what the hell? Well, yeah, that was a typical Hunter Specialties move. And uh, so Michael, doing like every other businessman should do with a warehouse full of parts that somebody bought and's not going to pay for, started Icotech. And I was one of the first people to kill it. I probably was the first person to kill a coyote with the Icotech because my job at Hunter Specialties was to monitor the market for pirates. And we found that call on on a website for manufacturers. He was pitching this call trying to sell it. And and <laughs> anyway, um, it didn't have our sounds on it. He had made a deal with Bill Martz. Um, I killed coyotes with it. It's a pretty cool little call. Um, but anyway, when I quit HS, Icotech contacted me maybe a few week, a month long discussion over contracts, yada, yada, yada. They decided to hire me. And when I got sent the contract, the numbers weren't what we agreed on. So it didn't work. Um, besides me and Chuck getting into it about it, um, and him calling me a bait and switch, it, it really wasn't that dramatic. It didn't work. Um, right. but in this process, they asked me, um, and, and I'm a marketing guy. That's what I, was by then, you know, seven years with HS, I was a marketing guy. I mean, I could do anything. Uh, and back then it was very easy to be on top of your marketing game. Um, so I'd give them this plan 
and it was to have field staffers, lots of them, 50 to be exact, one in every state. They were paid, and because I really believe that when you pay people, um, it, it shows appreciation. It shows that you appreciate what they do, mm-hmm. and it shows value. And uh, anyway, um, and they were going to be killers. They weren't going to be these. I've seen Fox Pro like cater to field staffers that ha- their whole life hasn't killed as many coyotes as, as uh, Cal Taylor has in a weekend, you know. And anyway, when we decided not to do this contract, Icotech comes up with this big O. We got Team Michigan, we got Team Wisconsin, we got Team Maryland, we got Team California, we got Team Missouri, we got all these teams. Well, Mike being what he's really good at responds. And next thing, like, I don't think I'm responsible for the bullshit, but I damn sure put it in Icotech's head. Right. And it, it you know, yeah, it, it, it just spiraled well, out I mean, of control. Not only, not only did it start this, what I call the e call wars on Facebook. Yeah, it's yeah. It was pretty serious, but it, it spiraled out of control outward. So then you had, especially with as big of a market as Texas is for for at the time, for lights. It's all these other new companies, predator hunting light companies popped mm-hmm. up. They did. They followed suit, start giving out product. Yeah, pro staffers, and it just it got shit got crazy. Which I mean, it was also like one of the biggest explosion times for predator hunting. But it also, I don't know if it was good though. It it, it <laughs> wasn't. It wasn't good. Um, sales were good before, mm-hmm. and sales are good after. It's just the content that we absorb of, as human beings on the digital platform is not where we want it to be. I think, yeah. in my opinion, I'm not. So, uh, if you guys are watching this and you're pro staffers or field staffers and you're not getting paid, I'm not calling you dumb. I'm not talking shit on you. I just want you to know that these companies are making millions of dollars. Yep. And if they ain't paying you now, they ain't paying you then. So all this family bullshit, all this brotherhood bullshit, all this bullshit they're spitting at you. Mm -hmm. It's just not, I can't believe you took me down this rabbit hole. (laughs) You did this on purpose. A little bit. Use use code uh, predator call 10 in the the checkout box. It's that fucking beep. It's like a shot caller. Now, now Wade, do it now. Yeah. Do it now. You it's, know, you wouldn't I, believe how many emails I'm getting and messages on Legend Precision. You know, hey man, I'd like to shoot your scope. Oh yeah. You oh, know, you know yes. what I do? Coyotecalls.com. Yeah, Leaked. you can get one there. Yeah, buy we that get the same shit. I had a guy. I'm not gonna call him out by name, even though I probably should. But whatever, I'll do it. Shit. You, you, all your people hate me now. I'm telling you. No. Fifty percent of people watching so. this probably think I'm a. Well, I mean, fifty fifty percent of the people that watch ours probably hate me. <laughs> like this video if you hate both of them. <laughs> well, so so I'm probably going to get called and cussed by Mike Dillon. Yeah, it'll be. But all Mike, right. need, Mike needs to understand. Mike, if you're watching this, Byron South said even negative promotion is good promotion. <laughs> you should so, you should pay me for this. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. At the end of the day, you really it's. Because you see it a lot with uh, whether you get in, like the thermal market or you get into any of these gun markets, the manufacturers are the ones kind of abusing people. Exactly. exactly. That's where I'm, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going. <laughs> and uh, push the beat button. Yeah. Push it. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. um, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. And so yeah, they're the ones <laughs> like they're driving the price down. They're squeezing out all the resellers. At the end of the day, it's all for the benefit of the manufacturers while hurting small businesses who sell the product, and then taking advantage of everybody else in the process. A- absolutely. Just so yep. somebody can save a hundred bucks on a scope or whatever. Yeah. Unless, or a free scope. unless legend precision gets bought out, you're never going to see that in big box. Mm-hmm. Never. Um, I'm anti big box. Um, and I don't have sponsors, so I don't care who I piss off. Um, I want people to buy my stuff because it's a good product. Yeah. I would, I don't care if people like me or not anymore. Uh, I chased that dream for a long time. And, and it's, I mean, we're all humans. Some people just don't like people and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that don't make me a bad person. It don't make me, you know, um, I don't like Mike Dillon, but that don't mean he's a bad person. Um, you know, it, I mean, we all talk, we're all cordial. We're all acquaintances. Um, I'm just a little more honest than most people. That's why I always yeah. get the shit. Yeah. That's why your beeper went off. <laughs> Call this guy out by name. You finish your story. 
So I mean, it's just one of many. Okay, which what is your name? Now, yeah, actually, now I actually don't remember. Oh bullshit! <laughs> I'd have to look back through messages. I don't even know if I've told you about this. We I get messages quite often. People want want us to sponsor them ammo, and I'm like, first thing I do before I even think about it, I go back and look see if they bought from me. Yeah, because if they haven't even bought ammo from us, they're just they don't know, even know mm. what they're getting. No, they just want free shit. And if they haven't bought ammo from us previously, they like they haven't tested it and believe in it and all that shit, that, that message goes straight in the trash. We had, so typically this is how it goes, blah, 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 and I go, I appreciate it. We'll be watching you. Yeah. If they've, if they've actually bought ammo. Because I'm not opposed to sponsoring people ammo or, you know, looking to the future, bringing them on as a staffer or whatever, you know, I'm not yeah. opposed to any of that. But if you haven't even bought any ammo, why you waste your time? But anyways, I always tell them, you know, appreciate your business. Appreciate your, uh, you know, curiousness about it. We'll be watching you. And that's usually as far as it goes. Now, I had one particular gentleman, younger guy, hungry. And you don't, seems like you don't see this as much as you used to during that vast explosion Mm -hmm. of, of guys hungry to be in the predator hunting industry and i say that with quotations because it's kind of bullshit but whatever that's yeah. a whole nother conversation this guy fucking messaged me at least a hundred times and finally i responded okay i'll be keeping an eye on your social media meanwhile having never bought any ammo from us it wouldn't know like it, it, i should really bring up the messages like Y'all guys are putting out the most, the best predator hunting ammo, blah, 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 you know, kissing oh, yeah. a lot of ass. I'm sure you get the same shit. Wasn't a week later, I see a little hashtag in this picture, 1776 ammunition. <laughs> it's like, oh, you found somebody to take the bait. You know, uh, I do see it some, but not so much anymore because uh, I'm very vocal about what I feel, right. how I feel about it. Um, I Like I just tell them, I'm like, man. I want you to believe in me because I'm valuable. I'm worth something. My product's worth something. It's helping you. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I've being honest, I've cost myself a lot of money. You know, that's why I'm building rifles. Yeah. At the long run, it, I should have been doing this 20 years ago, but you know, Winchester fired me, you know, the great American legend fired me because I pissed off somebody in Brazil that was making some kind of bullshit part for him. Yeah. And I, I posted a picture I was in into a fight uh, with a Greenpeace group out of Brazil online. And I get messages still today. You're a loose cannon. Why you fight with these guys? It's fucking entertainment. <laughs> like this one. I want to. Well, yeah, because uh, <laughs> there ain't nothing else to do besides watch all these jack offs run around here. And yeah. The, it's funny the other day, this lady. So I have this video and it was watched like 35,000 times put up like five years ago or whatever. All of a sudden I get this hate mail <laughs> and it's on this video or on Facebook. So this happens for like a week. I look, I just happened to look at the views one day. It's a, some bitch is over 2 million views. Now. Oh yes. And, yes. And I, I'm like, yeah, you bastards. I'm fitting that algorithm. I don't care yes. if you're all buying or anything. I'm getting delivered. But, but the thing about it is, is like this one lady, she's like just a simple fuck you. <laughs> And I said, I said, bitch, I said, you think this is bad? Look my ass up on Pornhub. (laughs) You know, I, why can't we be like we are right now? Yeah. We're all buddies. We're all friends. Uh, If we ain't friends, we should still be this way. Mm -hmm. Honest, transparent. Um, I've got buddies that when they first come out on TV, they're standing in a creek with a bow and they're like, God gave me dominion over all this shit. (laughs) And I'm going to grab my arrow and my quiver and go get venison or whatever that verse is, you know? Yeah. That some bitch was at Sapphire with me the week before. <laughs> at SHOT Show. Yeah. If y'all don't know what that is, Google that shit. <laughs> I, yeah. Oh, you, that's one thing I was going to bring up during this. And this may hurt some feelings, but I oh, frankly great. don't care. Uh, over the years, I've been... I hate to say shit like I'm blessed, but I've been lucky enough. We'll just call it that. No, we're all blessed. You, it's Blessed is not a bad word. I've been blessed, lucky, whatever you want to call it, to be able to hunt with a few, maybe more than a few TV people or, you know, of the sort. Now that you brought that up, there's only two people 
I've ever hunted with that I thought there were some real motherfuckers. It was oh, you, man. You and oh, I uh, you Jeff. Meant, I thought you meant like bad motherfucker, <laughs> like awful. No, no, like what you. My biggest thing is, is when you go hunt with these people, those those TV personalities, they tend to be a bit fake. Yeah, and, you know. Now that you brought that up, it just kind of spurred it up. Like before we go further, though, I've been there. I mean, I have. Been, I'm I'm not perfect. Yeah, I've not made shit up or lied. But I've not been completely transparent through my whole career. Right. Now you can for sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure people know I'm not right. like playing the whole I'm the right. awesomest. But I mean, when y'all come out in, I guess it was maybe your last season that you did TV? No, no. Or maybe the one before? Um, no, it was shit, man. Four years ago or so. I thought Five that years. was. I just pulled off last winter, not this winter. Oh, last winter. okay. So it's well, been then a, I'm out of fucking. It's been three or four or five years. When y'all come out here and film the, uh, the I air mean, gun shit, the air gun yeah. shit was the when you smoked that bobcat. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I, you know, I remember me and Brooke were standing off the side, and I was watching you do the TV thing, and I'm like, that that right there is what I like to fucking see. Yeah, someone who's legitimately super fucking stoked about what they just did oh, yeah not this fucking fake ass bullshit and that's and again you when you hunt with certain people you get to see behind the scenes and you're like mm -hmm. what the fuck is this shit yeah <laughs> like you just wasn't even and that's how and i pick on white tail hunters a lot because i think it's fucking funny above all <laughs> but that's how most of fucking white tail hunters are oh yeah pretty goddamn fake yep and people People shouldn't get upset. I just don't understand why people get upset because you're just fucking real. You're, you, you are who you are. Yeah, and some people are going to be offended about me talking about the free labor thing. And, you know, Mike's going to get pissed off because I even drug him in the conversation. Well, it's fucking true. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I, I mean, I, t I tell you right now, people better not. They better be glad I ain't doing educational seminars on the <laughs> Buy American Act. And you know what the fuck that is. I don't guess I do. You don't know what the... Uh, we ain't doing it on this podcast. <laughs> Fuck you. Bitsy, what is that? Don't say it. <laughs> if you want to start a war, it, don't, I don't say give it. a shit. No, I do. Yeah, we don't need that fix. No, no Lodge, Lodge it. Let's do it. Say it. No. Say it. I ain't. But anyway, m moving we'll, right along. We'll talk about that over Let's lunch. talk about squirrel hunting <laughs> or some shit. When... I am cu uh, generally curious. When... What is your either first predator hunt or your first memorable predator hunt. okay yeah yeah that's an easy one so um i started coyote hunting with dogs with my uncle and i'm gonna short stream this he was a drunk one day he didn't show up i <laughs> cried about it boohoo i was at my grandma's um my aunt Kay and uncle robert were coming over there which i love them dearly just super great people and he threw a flat top recorder like one of them that you used to like push record button yeah. and you could talk in on my I was laying in the recliner and he just threw it on me. I was like, Oh, what the hell? And then he threw a cassette tape and hit me on the forehead. <laughs> it said, Johnny Stewart, Jackrabbit in distress. I'm like, first of all, I'm like, what the fuck's a Jackrabbit? <laughs> I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't even know what bull riding was until the week before I entered a rodeo. You know, that's, I'm, well, I'm that guy, <laughs> yeah. you know, if I see something I like, I want it yeah. and I want it bad and I want to be the best. And, uh, He's like, yeah, your uncle's not going to take you. Just go call him up. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, just go out there, push that button, set it down, kill a coyote. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. Yeah. Lying son of a bitch. <laughs> He's my favorite uncle. And, you know, um, it took me a long time. And one day, I was. this was when I was like 13, so I'm 16 years old and I've got me a truck, fresh three inches of snow. What, what do we do? We, we grab our guns, mm -hmm. grab some beer and we go hunting. Yeah. And that's what hillbilly kids did. Yeah. And I remember driving through lead mine, um, conservation area in Missouri. And I see these tracks are across the road and I stop and I'm like, that was a coyote. Well, it wasn't a coyote. It was a fox track ended up. But anyway, by then I'd kind of gotten a little lazy, so I had a Pioneer speaker with a magnet I could just put on top of my truck with a wire to the cassette. Mm -hmm. So I'd throw that in there and usually just set my truck. <laughs> yeah. Kill nothing. So I'd killed this. So long story short, three minutes, or I put I put the truck in part, you know, da -la, run to the other side of the ditch the way the tracks were going, 
And in three minutes, I killed this fox. And I was like, holy hell. And it was the awesomest thing I'd ever experienced in my life. I'd killed deer, turkeys, yada, but this was awesome. Yeah. Something you never see. Back then, Missouri didn't have coyotes really hardly or foxes or bobcats. I mean, everything was. And, um, well, I went quite a while without killing anything else. And then I got to thinking, you know, why am I not killing? I mean, there's tracks everywhere. You know, I killed that one. There was tracks. What's the problem? Um, well, my uncle, when we used to go squirrel hunt, we used to go outside of town at this little church. It had walnut trees all through the graveyard loaded with squirrels we'd kill squirrels i knew squirrels were there Mm -hmm. he knew squirrels was there 30 minutes we killed so many squirrels we were done we didn't waste time he was a good woodsman being a good woodsman don't mean you have to build fires (laughs) with pop cans and rocks or whatever i mean it just means you get shit done you know how to get shit so i started like thinking about this i'm like man i got tracks i got this then i started thinking why am uh, well, anyway, long story short, I started putting all this shit together and realizing, hey, you got to know when, why, and where they're at, you know, and then you kill shit. It's not just go out and push a button. It's not go out and think about it. I've killed coyotes with flat top recorders. I've killed coyotes with boom boxes. Um, I couldn't afford calls, so I was buying, you know, $20 radios from Walmart and getting shit done. Yeah. You know, that's why... Uh, you know, uh, game tracks. Um, some of the high tech callers that you see today is a is a reaction to game tracks. Game tracks never really happened because Ron Durr decided to build the electronics for Primos, so he didn't want to infringe on that action. So, which meant he didn't want cut off. He wanted to make money, but game tracks, uh, remote distance, all these bells and whistles. Um, Hell, Kanadi Tech was doing 24-bit sound 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, about everything's a reaction to something, you know. But I'm the type of guy, like, just, you know, I'll use electronics when I want to, like, hunting bobcats, I like using electronics. I still do for coyotes. I haven't, I haven't killed a coyote, well, unless it was out of a high rack. I haven't killed a coyote over an electronic call in four years or so. But you know what? I only killed one coyote and one bobcat in 2022, and nobody even knew. So, I mean, I may just be full of bullshit. I don't know. (laughs) You know? So, it's interesting that your first experience was with a tape tape call, I guess, tape deck or whatever you want to call it. Most people, it's it's almost always a mouth call. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know what a mouth call was. I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing then. Yeah. Um. But I put it together, and that's probably why I became very successful at calling animals. Um, by then, I was yelping up turkeys like no tomorrow. By then, I was grunting up deer and rattling in deer like no tomorrow. No matter how I need to get shit. I mean, I'm a hillbilly. Yeah, I'm, we had groceries and stuff, so I wasn't living on a dirt <laughs> floor like my grandparents were. But I was learning from people that actually had to do this shit. Like, this was not, you know, when when Aunt... Dossie and Deldy woke up and there was a bear track in the ashes right off the front porch. Uncle Garvin and Guy Bill, they went out and killed that son of a bitch. Yeah. Not because they were scared, because that fed them. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. bit, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I just learned from really good people, and I'm trying to pass that on and try to, um, you know, I always tell people I'm very transparent. I don't care who shit you use. I want to help you be successful. Yeah. And I think that's what we all should should do yep um this bullshit well if you ain't using this and you ain't using this sound you're doing it wrong yeah that's complete horse shit yeah i'm gonna tell everybody that's listening to this if you're on facebook and somebody is trying to tell you how to call a coyote or what the best coyote call is and they mention a product they're full of shit and they're my buddies some of them so if they're mad at me i don't really care because they know how i feel well deep down inside they probably know it's the truth it is the truth is it it, that's why I don't, I don't like, I'm the same way. I won't, I don't hitch myself to nothing. I just tell people, Hey, this is what I use. If you're, if you're, if you're asking me, this is what I use. But at the end of the day, it doesn't make a shit. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. When people ask me, you know, what's the best hand calls? I don't know what the best is. I built dog soldier hand calls to my liking. So yeah. they're the best for me. Yep. 
um, the Blood Red Jack and the Blood Red Moon, I changed them with Major Boddicker's permission. I changed some dimensions on his tone board and made it my own. Mm-hmm. That was not a high tail, I'm reinventing the wheel bullshit. That was to make it a little more user friendly, that it was already user friendly, but I thought I could do it a little better. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying I made a better call than Boddicker. I, I made it better for me. Hell, I won the world championships blowing on a uh, Carlton song dog and, and a uh, Carlton diaphragm elk bugle howler or that's what I howled with a yeah. diaphragm, you know, I was the first one to use a diaphragm in a howling contest in 2008. And, uh, you know, I didn't win in 2008, which was really weird because everybody thought I did. Um, but I didn't care. Um, I didn't even enter for 2010. Uh, Al entered me actually. And, uh, I fucked around and won it, but, um, you know, being a world champion is cool. Uh, but what people need to understand is it's not something it, I can flex about it, but I was just better then. Yeah. Like there's some good howlers out there, Yeah, you know, and you just got to be at the right place at the right time. It's like all this other shit, you know, um, it gained me notoriety and it gained me attention and being in the industry, you know, people thought I was an expert and I'm not an expert on coyotes. I, I probably could say I'm an expert at killing shit because I don't care how I need to do it. I get it done. Yeah. Um, and that's just simple woodsmanship. You know, we all should follow them guidelines of being a woodsman, which is just getting shit done. Yeah, that's for sure. Let's get into the rifles. What, I mean, I know you've already briefly touched on it, but what, what led you down that road? Man, so like... um. As a manufacturer, well, first of all, you know, Winchester fired me. Um, I posted a picture with bloody hands, and I flipped off the camera. And uh, I was like, you know, this means fuck off an American. Because I'd been fighting these people for a month or so. And, I mean, death threats, um, wishing rape upon my girls. I mean, these guys were digging into me pretty hard. Yeah. And, and I have some stories that I can tell you off air from different um, – past experience with especially some of these um spanish i guess is what you call them greenpeace groups and um you know and i've had like i've had like fbi call me and shit and i've also had some off the record talks with some high up authorities that that don't deal with this shit very good and uh so anyway um, I always fight back. Uh, everybody says, why do you even entertain them? Because it's entertainment. Yeah. I mean, I'm bored. <laughs> but anyway, Winchester, Jason Gilbertson called me one day and he had Aaron with him. And he's like, oh, also I got this other Aaron. And I'm like, what do you got a lawyer with you for? I've never told this story, by the way. And he's like, well, who said it was a lawyer? I said, Jason, like I've been with Winchester for a hundred fucking years with ammo I've been with the rifle part for a long time. I was like, what's this about, man? I know it's contract time, but Jesus. And he yeah. goes, you can't do that. He goes, off the record, yeah, we support you and we, you know, but there's people that buy our guns that don't believe in what you're standing for doing that. And I'm like, <laughs> you're, I, like you should be doing a press release how you're supporting me, right. not firing me yeah. over a picture. That was a $30,000 deal, right? And so as a manufacturer, I'm like, okay, I'm not a sponsor jumper. When I lose a sponsor, I tend to just manufacture my own shit or figure out how to sell somebody else's shit and make money, Mm -hmm. Um, which is fine. That's where coyotecalls.com and some other businesses I have um, come into play. And uh, so I was like, hmm, what do I need to solve? The predator hunting industry needs a good, solid custom gun. And there's some there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a lot of good custom gun builders, but not really marketed, you know? Yeah. And uh, so a buddy of mine in Oregon, an old buddy of mine, um, always trying to build me a gun and shit like that. I'm like, hey, let's go into business. And I pitched an idea to him, and he agreed on it. One of my ideas was being able to deliver. Because as a manufacturer, you you study a market, uh, you study numbers. As a marketing guy, you study how to sell. 
Well, the one thing I found in conflict with my mission um, as a gun, as dog soldier, as a gun brand, is how do we deliver? Because there's always like, oh, I'm 12 months out or I'm one month out. Or you pay for the motherfuckers and never get them. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, how do I fix this? So I made this deal with this guy. Oh. A lot. We sold a lot. I started getting messages. Hey, where's my rifle? Uh, what rifle? Well, I bought a dog soldier rifle and it was supposed to be here three weeks ago. Uh, who'd you buy a dog soldier rifle off of? Well, Brian. I'm like, huh. So I'm like, whoa, I was meaning to tell you that. Uh, you know. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so on top of all this other bullshit, he started not delivering, which was very typical. I'm not saying every gun builder, because I'm a gun builder. I'm not talking shit about every gun builder, but it is very common in any industry if you're building shit and you you get 5000 bucks in your hand. Oh, well, I'll just spend it on this. And before long, you're yeah. robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. So when he started dicking around, I made a huge investment. I already, I already, I'm not a machinist by no means, but I already knew how to run a, a metal lathe and I already knew how to run lasers. I mean, I've been in manufacturing a long time. And, um, as long as you do shit right, if you make a boom go here and make it come out here and everything is right before, between point A and B, it's going to be an accurate gun if mm -hmm. you got to do it right. And so I made a huge investment. Um, I made a deal with a gun shop in Ten Sleep, Wyoming, where I live. I rented half their shop, made a huge investment on all these tools. But the biggest and best thing I ever did was I bought inventory of parts. Yeah. I treated it like any other situation. The only way you can deliver is to have parts. I called Northland Shooting Supply, and I'm like, hey, James, Steve Kreiner. Hey, what's up, Steve? I said, uh, how many 700 actions you got in? He's like, oh, I got 28 short actions, X amount of long actions. And I remember the short actions because I was like, you got 28? He goes, yeah. I said, this is your lucky day. He goes, why is that? And I said, because I'm going to let you keep three of them. Yeah. And I ordered 25, 700 actions. And, uh, you know, I'd make, I'd make deals like I love Douglas Double X Premium Barrels. And the reason why is because their marketing ain't as savvy as some of these other companies. But their barrels are. Yeah. But I can I could call if I needed a blank today. I could call and I'd have it in three weeks, and you can't do that in any other barrel company. I or, I just ordered thirty five thousand dollars worth of carbon six blanks, and I'm gonna wait a couple months on them. So it's like, um, you know, I just ordered my buying power um, allowed me to get an inventory, but also it, it created margins and I could bring them prices down a little bit. And when I first started building them, you know, they went, it was like around two grand and then they, you know, parts have went up like commodities the last mm -hmm. year or two years. Now, you know, my average is 3350. That's about as cheap as I can sell one, but I'm using Zermatt actions. Now I made a, a private label deal with Zermatt. They're making the dog soldier legend maker action, which is a, a, a 700 clone, but it's a, exactly like their origin. Yeah. Um, that little action can do anything. I shoot. I, I built 338 edges out of them. I built 204s out of them. I mean, they're they're nice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I ordered 46, I think, is what I ordered the last order. And I got like uh, 17 or 18 left. So I ordered, I ordered 10 more long actions last week. I'm getting ready to order some more short actions. And then I ordered some, uh, I ordered five short actions, five long actions, and five lefties for another thing I'm doing, which we can talk about if you want. Um, but they're just Zermatt origins because mm -hmm. I don't want people buying legend maker actions thinking that I'm making an action. Yeah. It's just simple. Saved me the laser process. Yeah. You know, yeah. Zermatt is a great name. Zermatt is a great, uh, uh, they're a great company. They build a badass action. It's a savage done right. Yeah. You know, um, interchangeable bolt face. It cuts down on my inventory. Yeah. And I'm a manufacturer. How efficient can I be with this? Zermatt. Now I just buy bolt faces, bolt knobs, Zermatt actions. Yeah. If you call me in one of two twenty three, I can if it has a three hundred eight bolt face on literally forty five seconds and you have a two twenty three action. Mm -hmm. And another good thing about precision actions is when I'm bored, hence buying all them carbon six blanks because I decided to bring the T two V, which is my lightweight model. To um, I'm not renaming nothing. Uh, I didn't reinvent the wheel. It's just my spec 
sheet. Yeah. It's called the Ticket to Valhalla, the T2V. It's the new Graybow Eagle they just come out with. Carbon six barrels, Zermatt action, Timony trigger. It's under seven pounds and it's 4150. Yeah. Well, when I'm bored, I can take like, like I rent my reamers. So if I get a hold of 4D and I'm like, hey, I need a six millimeter Creed reamer, you know, shit, I'll just chamber five or six barrels. And with them Zermatt actions, I can build the barrel from point A to point B 100% correct and throw it up on the shelf if I want. Yeah. Most of the time, I just go ahead and put them on an action and throw them on the shelf, you know. Yeah. But I don't get to do that much because I'm like I've I've sold eleven act or eleven actions, eleven guns since November alone, um, mm-hmm. and that's how I got with Carbon Six at Shot Show um, last week or two weeks ago. In a conversation, it come up, and Ron, the owner of Carbon Six, which I'd never met in my life, called me, and and I was very humbled. Really, uh, he just said, "Hey, your name come up in conversation," and kind of being talked about you're going to be one of the new premier gun builders in the united states i'm like huh <laughs> and he goes well your volume is unheard of i'm like huh <laughs> you know i'm just floored i'm like why is this guy calling me you know i'm just a little guy i'm just a custom gun builder yeah but i guess i build a lot of guns uh i'm Graybo's number one buyer aside from red hawk rifles when it comes to gun building um, I'm number one Douglas buyer. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it stretches out past, you know, cause I'm building anything from big bangers to short and I'm, I mean, I'm shooting. One thing I am is I'm addicted to killing shit. Right. Yeah. But I only killed one coyote and one bobcat last year. Well, can you imagine how much shit I really killed? Right. I, just, I was there. Yeah. But I don't, that's why I always tell people, send me pictures in these stories. Not so I can use them or regurgitate them for marketing material because nobody barely ever sees this. But I want to hear the story because I built that gun or I yeah. built that call. Yeah, I have blown on like every hand call dog soldier brand has ever been on since I took it from Flex Tone back. Every call I built. Yeah. My molder builds the parts and I build guns. It's not 10 guys building. Everybody said, what's the difference between your gun and a Weatherby? You know, $2,000 Weatherby is pretty nice and it's accurate out of the box. Yes, it is. But I built it. Yeah. I believe in it. One guy, whether it's me, you, or Fitz, one guy built this gun, not 10 Mm -hmm. or 12 or however many it takes in a factory. Shit's right. Yeah. Everything is right. And and I kind of got obsessed with it. You know, um, it's like anything else. I want to get good. Um I don't think I could ever call myself the best gun builder, even if I was, because I don't know if there can be a best gun builder because you're just, it's a, it's metal. <laughs> and I think you can build the most noticeable guns or maybe the cleanest guns or, but really if you pay attention to your tolerances and pay attention to what you're doing, you're good. Yeah. It's not rocket science. You're paying us gun builders to build you a $4,000 gun because you know what you get. You get good quality parts, you get good craftsmanship, and it's done right. Yeah. That's that's what I like about it. And that's what you're charging pretty much we're charging labor to build you something right. Mm-hmm. And um I do think I'm better than some, and there's a damn sure a lot better than me. Because I some people are a little more particular maybe than I am. Or Maybe they do something a little different that puts a spin on things that I don't know. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but he's a world champion long range shooter over and over and over again. He builds guns and every barrel is not straight. Well, if you're, if he's building a competition gun for over a thousand yards, he puts the bow down. If it's under a thousand yards, he puts it up. It's like true in a Remington 700 action. Does it make a difference? Fuck. I don't know, but it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. You know, Truna 700 action is a a huge debate. I believe in truing an action because I kind of feel like if you put the recoil distribution and everything else working in line, it has to work more efficient, especially when you get out long ranges. Mm -hmm. You've seen this. We've seen this. This is why I promote custom guns and not factory guns. You sight one in dead on at 200 yards. You dial your dope and you get out to a thousand and it's four foot to the left. 
people like, oh, it's wind. No, it's not wind. It's because your fucking barrel is sitting on your action to the left. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it might be wind, but a lot of people can't figure out. It's like dead calm, and they're flying all over, the, not yeah. all over the place, but in a certain direction. Yeah. And when I, I really learned that at a young age because, like, um, air guns, shooting short distances, air guns are very good. Archery, that's why we center shot our bows. Because if you're dead on it 10 yards and you get out to 40 yards and your arrow is five inches left, you move it to the right, and then at 10 yards, you're five, you know, your arrow's not center shot in the mechanism. Mm -hmm. You have to line everything. That's the only reason I believe in truing. Um, yeah. 700 actions that's my argument for that and i come up with shit like that that explains stuff to people like me that you know why do you do that well this is right. why i do it um the gun thing's been very good um it's um it allowed me to get into a different market uh, my heart and my passion is always predator hunting um and big white tails i love killing big white tails and i love manufacturing in all arenas but i'm really liking the gun market um, because nobody knows who I am. I really like that. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I can just do stuff. I can market stuff. I can build stuff and sell it. Um, and, um, it, you know, it just, it's huge. Like there's like last I looked, which was a long time ago. So it might be up. It might even be down, but there was $35 million across the board in the United States spent on predator hunting a year. That's Electronic calls, hand calls, guns for predator hunting, everything predator hunting category. There's billions and billions in the firearm industry. And if I even get like a, I almost said the C word. <laughs> if I get a point, point one, yeah, a tenth of percent of market share. Yeah. Dude, we're going to. Hawaii right. to see Stearman on his honeymoon. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's such a huge market and I love playing in it and I love trying to compete with these big ballers because there's good custom gun builders out there and there's a lot of them. It's a very saturated market, but there's enough market for it to be there. Yeah. And I don't have to get on Facebook, even though that it's fully heavily saturated with influencers as well. I don't have to get on there and try to compete with these guys. I feel like sometimes I'm locked in the predator hunting industry because I feel like people I'm guilty. I'm human. I feel like people will forget me, which I act like I don't care. And I was thinking about that when we was taking a piss a while ago. Um, I was just like, man, I just said I wouldn't care if I was forgotten. I probably would care. <laughs> you know, it, it would hurt. Um, but uh, I, there's a lot more to me than people know. Uh, you know, Dog Soldier brand has been very good. TV business is very good. The air gun business has been very good to me. Real air gun hunting was good. Um, I did that. I quit the air gun show to prove to myself that quality of life meant more than anything. Um, that was a cash cow, dude. I was making severe money off of that, but I wasn't happy. And when I walked away, I lost a lot of money. I didn't lose it, but I ain't going to get it no more. Right. And, uh, it made me feel good about myself because it meant, meant I, I'm very self-conscious and I say, I don't care what people think, which is true but I care what I think. And sometimes I don't think too good about myself. So I'm trying to prove to myself all the time that I'm succeeding in whatever I want to do. Um, you know, so the air gun deal was really good. I gave it up to prove to myself that, Hey, things are better. Um, could be better. Um, coyotecalls.com is very good. Um, I kind of let it, I didn't market it as hard the last year. So, I mean, sales went down obviously like typical marketing stuff does, which is fine. Um, cause I'm trying to sell it, you know, now I was like, what's it do? And I'm like, whatever. But I, so this month I was like, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. And I had a baller month and I'm going to have a baller year cause I'm going to keep it going. Cause it's, it's what I do. Um, I started another brand that I've never talked about and I've had it a while. I just never done anything with it. And, uh, it's boltrifle.com. That's a cool good name. name. Huh? You're good damn name. Right I is. can't believe it wasn't taken. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bought the son bitch. What dog. was, what is <laughs> I bought it. I did it like the good coyote calls. I gave $6,000 for coyote calls.com. Just yeah. the name, yeah. you know, and it was never touched in history. That name alone is worth a lot of freaking money. Cause I've made over, you know, in a four year span or whatever of coyote calls.com it's grossed, you know, over half a million bucks. Mm -hmm. And that's me playing around with hand calls and just some other skews, you know, right. It could be really good for somebody. 
boltrifle.com is going to be good for me. Um, it put a little fire under my ass I needed. Um, you know, about a year ago when I was going through the transaction with Bill, um, you know, even Sterling, you know, um, I had a little bit of a health issue, nothing worth talking about, but you know, Sterling and, and even Stearman a little bit kind of thought I was not motivated and slacking off. And I was trying to explain to Sterling, you know, like, like there's more to life than what we're doing. And also I was working on some other shit and I just had to chill. I had to kind of detox for a minute. Yep. And, and I like, it's no secret. I like playing video games. Well, Sterling thought I was just <laughs> sitting around playing video games. Like, I'm a big kid, you know. I love playing <laughs> fucking survival of zombie games. It's, yeah, you're laughing your ass off. You probably play them too in the bedroom. When my kids are here, we play some video yeah, games. So there you go. I love the shoot 'em ups. Yeah. There's there's something to be said about hand eye coordination with a video game. Exactly. Just I mean saying. whatever. You know? <laughs> whatever excuse we can use as adults exactly. to play video games. I'm gonna use it. And I'm happy with that. I don't give a yeah. shit what people think about me when it, like, I play video games all the time. I fucking love it. You know why? Because I, it's, it's my away from this. Yeah. You know, I eat, breathe, and sleep the hunting industry. And you notice I don't say predator hunting industry because this is an industry for me in a whole. Um, I'm in the industry. Most people that say they're in the industry are on Facebook. Like, Facebook is yeah. not the industry. And, um, so I'm working my ass off all the time and I need to get away. And yeah. I open that bar and grill and 10 sleep. So I'm there seven days a week. That's my other release. Like that's my hobby. I opened a bar and fucking grill as a hobby. Seems like <laughs> if you do start getting back into the podcast, be a great fucking spot for one. I'm in the podcast right now. I'm right here. <laughs> I don't know, man. I keep telling everybody I'm on cool off because I've, I believe when you talk about shit so long, you just kind of got to detox a little yeah. bit because like you run out of stuff to say. And then mm -hmm. I end up doing what you did while ago, dragging myself down a rabbit hole and bitching and moaning. And, <laughs> but it's fresh content for your viewers. Um, but boltrifle.com is going to be good, man. Yeah. Boltrifle.com is going to be your one-stop shop for bolt rifle guys. Uh, you know, gray bow stocks. Carbon six fiber barrels, Douglas barrels, triggers, actions, um, rails, scope mounts, minor range gunsmithing tools. Just pretty much, it's not going to be a distributor. Uh, it's just going to be like if you need something, you boltrifle.com. Like if you want to yeah. use st stock for your Remington 700 clone or platform. Hopefully you're going to go there and buy a Graybo. The reason I'm 100% Graybo um, is not because I don't like anything else, but it's because I have such a good relationship with them. Uh, they deliver when I need them to deliver. Um, the margins are all right. But, you know, uh, uh, Ryan Mellencon is like the number two, and then there's Ryan McMillan. Uh, Graybo's owned by Ryan McMillan, which Kelly McMillan was used to be the owner of uh, McMillan. And, I mean, they know their shit. No, oh, yeah. And I'm telling you right now, like – I sell a gun, a custom gun. I don't bed nothing. I hate bedding guns. Yeah. But all of them, like I've never not had one shoot. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just, I believe in what I believe in. Um, yeah, it might cost me a little bit of sales because I'm not carrying certain stuff. But like I'm an MDT dealer. That's where all my mags and stuff come through. Yeah, I can order an MDT chassis, but they're not going to be on the website kind of thing. Um, yeah. And that shows also that, and nobody will even know I own boltrifle.com when it launches. Hopefully it'll launch next month. Um, it better because I got about a hundred grand working on a hundred grand strung out there that I'm buying inventory. Mm -hmm. That's another thing as a manufacturer that you try to solve problems and, and a lot of it's delivery. Um, I didn't want to launch boltrifle.com and just have a bunch of like, you, it ain't even online right now. The website's getting built, but by the time it gets built, I'll have all this inventory and like, I ordered uh, 80 some Graybow stocks. Like I'm going to have inventory. That's unheard of. Yeah. You know, Graybow don't even have that much inventory on hand. And I ain't going to launch this bitch till I have them on hand. Yeah. And because I think that's what is going to make that successful. Yeah. Um, it's probably going to be a buyout situation like everything else I touch. You know, somebody will be like, man, I could really do great things with that. Yeah, you probably could. I'm not a millionaire. I don't have a lot of money. I work on a line of credit just like every other small business owner. Um, it probably would be good. 
Yeah. And it could be better than Red Hawk. Yeah. I mean, it could, it's going to be a multi million dollar business. Um, so that's why, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff I do. I'm constantly, um, Legend Precision Optics, the scope company. Um, I didn't reinvent the wheel, but I wanted to scope a certain way. And we're mm-hmm. getting ready to come out with another hunting model, and then we'll have. So you've seen the LRA. Mm-hmm. So it's a really nice long range competition slash could be hunting scope. It's really nice. Well, the hunting scope's going to be um, a proprietary reticle, side focus, illumination. Um, it will have adjustable target turret for elevation, but the, but the uh, windage will be capped um, 30 millimeter tube, 50 millimeter bell, and it'd be four by 16. So what I would think would be the her- perfect hunting scope for me. Right. When that happens, also we're going to do the LRA and MOA and Milrad and the hunting one, probably just an MOA. I don't understand why people can't understand Milrads, but <laughs> that's a tough one. <laughs> I, I don't understand that. Like it's, it's I always wanted to be a sample. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to be an army sniper. You know, I was like, I'm joining the Marine Corps. I'm going to be a, and the reason I joined the Marine Corps is because you couldn't pick scout snipers in MOS. You had to earn it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was in the delayed entry program for the Marine Corps. And I, I've always studied, like it's always been the mill dot dog soldier scope, mill dot reticle. Yeah. Everybody's like, well, why is it MOA adjustment? But mill dot reticle, well, they're capped adjustments or sight in knobs. Yeah, but that don't answer the question. Well, it's MOA, so you understand. Yeah. The majority of the market don't understand mill rides, which no. is fine, yeah. which is totally fine. Um, everybody's set in their way, so I'm just going to have to invest more money. And in, aside from the 500 LRAs I have set in there now, I'm going to have to get 500 more. And yeah. then the hunting model, I'll probably just do MOA because it kind of makes sense. Uh, most hunting guys, you know, if you're five inches low at 300 yards with a 243, it's just simple for them. Yeah. Um, it's not for me, but it, the, you know, there is, as far as I think of everything long range hunting, cause that's what I like to do. There is a certain aspect to a certain quickness about, uh, judging animals with the MOA reticle mm-hmm. because it is, I mean, mills are not hard by any, no, you know, but for people, a lot of your hunters are getting into shooting a little bit further nowadays because <laughs> the new cartridges and custom rifles, everything else. There is, it is for me to teach them to do stuff. It is easier when MOA. Now, say for, for example, we're looking at a deer at 800 yards through a rifle scope, MOA. We can quickly use the reticle to get a uh, rough estimate of how wide he is. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I still run mill more than anything. <laughs> like, well, I know. I, like, I, I it just, it's that way. I don't, yeah. I have a buddy that, that, uh, he did not buy the dog soldier axion scope uh, because it was a mill dot reticle. And I'm like, <laughs> this is simple mill dots, no Christmas yeah. tree. And I'm like, so I'm sitting down there on a napkin and I'm like 3.67, you know, it's, it's just, and that's fine. It's yeah. not wrong or right. right. It's right. just some people I don't understand, but some people don't give mill rad. Mill rad is designed to judge and kill people. Yeah. Um, which is whatever. Um, you know, when you're out in the field, yeah, you can judge, you know, width of deer and stuff with an MOA reticle. But nowadays, long range shooting, like, this is another thing. I'm like, every program has a choice of MOA or Milrad. And we'll yeah, that's out. what that's what I was about to get to. Other than just a uh, preference on on quickly being able to uh, measure like antlers or whatever, there's absolutely no reason to not run a, a mill graduated scope. And I, I tell people this all the time. They, the, the reticles tend to be much simpler is what I like. And it, if people actually get out and train with their equipment, they would like a simpler reticle as well. Yes. And the uh, mills is, is so freaking easy for, okay, quick little tip for anybody as it pertains to mills. If you know the yardage, you with most modern cartridges, you can pretty much guarantee you take the yardage, and subtract what is it 52 mils so like say yeah uh, four 400 yards subtract 200 it's two mils for most modern and it's just so much easier it's a smaller number if you're going to make a data chart and yeah. there's there's yeah. absolutely no reason because everything all the range finders binoculars everything can do mils or it's quicker everything moa it's quicker so it's, everything 
It, it, what bugs me is like you have these, what is it? Uh, I don't even own a MOA reticle. But so like the first hash down is like four, four MOA. Yeah. Holy fuck. <laughs> your point zero, your, your point four from one meal. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I don't yeah. like your, your first markdown is four mil. Let's just say on some most reticles. So I got, is that right? This is like depends. There's so much shit nowadays. It'll either be two or four. Most of them are graduated in your biggest lines, like the Christmas tree style reticles. Yeah. Your biggest lines are going to be graduated in uh, two, two mil increments with a little small hash for the yeah. single digits. But it, you know, it's, God, there's so much shit available nowadays. Some of them are yeah. graduated in. Let's say like the Mark Five TMR. It's graduated point five mil. But I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of stuff people just tend to overthink. Yeah. That's what, I, when I told Sterling, I kind of let him do the lead on the reticle and I think he'd done a really great job. Um, I told him, I said, simplify this for me. I don't want all this shit hanging out. You don't need all that shit. No, yeah, like we don't. It's so, to me, it's just dumb. To me, that reticle would make a perfect uh, long range hunting reticle as well. Yeah. And I'm, I'll probably put it in the hunting but I may take some of like the quarter graduations out. Yeah. Um, one thing that's like, you know, guys are there. Like I had a guy reply like, well, you replied to it too. It's like, Oh, three meals. That's going to like get me to 500 yards. Yeah. <laughs> and a thousand. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah. like, like first of all, he, and he, and he mentioned, I think he even mentioned like targets, you know? And I'm like, like I hold over some just for the hell of it, but usually yeah. I hate shooting just for the hell. It's like roping when I'm roping steers, you know, that's funny. You know, everybody's like, Oh, cowboy one day biker, the next kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I've roped and rodeoed my whole life and rode Harleys my whole life. And when I'm rope, like I love horses when I don't have to feed them. I love saddling <laughs> horses. If I'm going roping, I yeah. love roping. If I'm going to go in, if I'm not winning or roping, I don't want to ride a fucking horse. If I'm not killing shit, I really don't, unless like you showed up or somebody or like that time we laid out here, I don't really, I'm just, we shoot 10 rounds at a dinger on the ranch, you know, at the lease and I'm good with it. You know, I, I just like my six creeds, you know, I shoot factory ammo out of my six creeds. I, I reload for about everything and have, you know, I have 18 pounds of 4350, but I don't use it because I hate reloading, (laughs) but my rum you know, I reload yeah. for my 300, um, but I don't know. It's just, I think, you know, and everybody's like, well, you got to do this. You got to do, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not Bushnell or Leopold or Vortex. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can't afford to have a model for every person that looks at this catalog. Yeah. I may not, it's kind of like me. I may not suit you and that's fine. There may be better options out there and that's fine, but I'm going to do the best for you that I can with what I have. Yeah. That's kind of what we're doing with legend precision optics. And we're not tackling the big box market. We're tackling the us market. Yeah. You know, I want people like you using, I want people like me using, I want people to believe in small business again. Yeah. And I want to keep it small business. If somebody comes up and tries to buy it out tomorrow and I sell it, I hope they keep it small business. Mm -hmm. More than likely they won't. Uh, That's just a fact of a matter, but you know, um, I hear a lot vortex, um, vortex, you know, it's good, good optics. Uh, we all use the same parts. Um, now we can get into that by American act. <laughs> so we all, we all use the same parts, but, but I do know if you're selling, you know, 15,000 scopes a month to big box, if you do the math and you cut four or $5 off of a product, you're making a shit ton more. Mm-hmm. And that typically what happens with big box companies. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I do know for a fact it's happening in the optics industry because the return rates are going up. Um, I know how to get them return rates. Um, that's another thing. You know, there's so much more. Like I used to make, I used to tell people, if you don't know what an algorithm is, you're, you're not in, you're not, you're not doing it right. Um, yeah. And I remember when I didn't know what that was, but I was taught. Um, U.S. Optics. Same parts, ED glass, nice, good, thick brass, good components, good casings, 
assembled in the United States in a multi-million dollar dust-free facility by American Act. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. So anybody listening can take that where they want to go with it. (laughs) So, and I even believe, so don't quote me, but I believe if it's not offered in the United States, it's exempt from the Buy American Act. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't get AED glass in the United States. (laughs) No. Not that I'm. (laughs) Not I, that I'm aware of. I think you can from Leopold, probably. Uh, Leopold and uh, Night Forces U.S., some of their stuff. But the problem is, I don't know if they're making their own glass, but if you can't get it in the United States, it's excluded. Yeah. But the but if they're more than likely just the two components, you're fine. Yeah. Um, if you want an American-made product. But one thing, so Leopold's not going to build Steve Kreiner a scope. Um, it's no secret. I don't keep it a secret that it the Legend Precision Scope is made in China. Yeah. Um, good components, ED glass. It's heavy. I wanted a heavy scope. Um, my theory behind that is is we're all shooting a little lighter weapons now. When we put a can out front, you're off balance. So I like a little weight to the back. Mm-hmm. So that makes it good for me. But I have heard a lot of people say, well, you know, heavier scopes tend to shift a little more on big bangers. Well, then you got to make sure it don't shift. Yeah. It's, that's a simple fix. Well, I mean, it's 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 no heavier than some of the other ones out there. Yeah, no, there. It, it's just people picking, you know, which oh, is yeah. totally fine. Yeah, that's why I told um, I was telling Sterling like it doesn't make a shit what y'all do. Someone's it, not going to be happy yeah, with and, the goddamn scope. And I'm trying to get him like tuned in on that. He's got a lot to learn, and he's learning very fast. Sterling is a, a perfectionist; like he don't want to lose. Yeah, yeah. And he missed a pig the other day. And, like, he's going to be mad for me telling this story, but he's, like, throwing his shit. And he's, like, I'm going to the house. I said, no, you're not, dude. He's, like, There's why? more pigs. Well, he's, like, why? And I'm, like, because I'm riding with you, and I'm not going to the house. I want to shoot a pig. And, anyway, like, oh, God damn. he wants to win yeah. everything. Yeah. And, and I don't blame him. Man, that fire is awesome. And he, in the last year has been very educational for every one of us. Uh, the year before that was educational for me when I was taking my little siesta. Actually, I was working on the sidelines. I mean, I'm still building calls. I'm still doing everything I was doing. I just wasn't out in the public eye as much. And, mm-hmm. and Sterling thought I was, uh, he just thought I was just dicking off. And and I tried to explain to him, like, maybe I, if I was, that ain't a bad thing. Yeah. Well, you're not motivated. I understand that. But I'm still going. Yeah, I'm motivated now. This boltrifle.com deal's got a fire under my ass, and yeah. and I'm putting a lot of money into it. I'm putting a lot of charge into it, and hopefully it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think it will. Uh, but you know, Sterling, and he's going to be a king, king on that deal too. He's going to help me good with that. Uh, and I'm not saying that just because he's one of my homies. I mean, he's like <sighs> a brother to me. I mean, that kid. He's he's got everything you want in a winner. Yeah. Just sometimes you got to just wrap some ace bandage around yeah. it and like that's, my elbow, you just got that's what to me, that's what you want out of uh people around you. Yeah. You want, you want the ones you got to hold back a little bit. Yeah. You can't win if you don't hang out with winners. Yep. Steerman, that's fact. Steerman is not as vocal as I am or Sterling. We call Sterling famous for a reason. <laughs> you know that <laughs> Steerman has a, uh, well, I don't want to, get into his business or throw numbers around, but he's a very successful business owner. Mm -hmm. Very successful. Dennis Riley, a regulator that nobody ever hears or sees from unless you're a friend with him on Facebook page. He don't even shoot my guns. He don't, well, he uses my calls a little bit. Killing some bitch. Very successful. Probably one of the most successful Zen Windows market owners in the United States. If you pay attention to me, like, it's just the God's blessing that we can all be, that we're all fighters, Mm -hmm. that we're all tough, and we all are who we are. But really, at the end of the day, like, we're all businessmen, too. Like, Sterling is a businessman. Like, he's turned his wood, you know, Maverick Millworks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) He could quit work right now if he wanted to and make that thing really big. Yeah. I mean, you surround yourself around people, um, kind of like you, you know, you, you're obviously entrepreneurial, uh, you like manufacturing, you know, that's the type of people I cling to, mm-hmm. um, 
you know, I don't give a shit how many coyotes or how many deer or whatever people kill. If you judge somebody's success, like when me and Heath Baker, the last big fight we got into, you know, he's all mouthed and, you know, I put fur in the truck and I kill all this shit. If you judge, and I didn't say this to his people, I said this to him, if you're judging you on how many fucking coyotes you kill, you fucking lost, man. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't about that. Oh, there's... There's so many people out there that think that's what it's about. I, I don't, it, it, with the exception of what Clay did, the numbers were obviously important. Yeah. You know, he's, he set out to do a thing and all that. Other than that, I don't give a shit how many cows people kill. And I quit, I quit talking, I quit throwing numbers out. And if anybody even asked me how many cows, I'm just like, few yeah you know it doesn't matter like clay says he didn't have no reason to do it he just wanted to do it (laughs) exactly and and that's fine that was a personal goal he set i hope he did it for a personal goal um you know like i said on one of his posts a while back he said something about uh some scope company mentioning him and fox pro mentioning him i'm like yeah you think they would and they finally do you know at the end i mean give me a fucking break man at the end yeah that's fucking. I, I hope whatever. He, I hope he killed them through three hundred and fifty million coyotes. I hope he killed them for himself. <laughs> yeah, I hope he killed them for himself. Oh, he definitely he definitely did it for the right reasons. Not. I, I don't know. I've not had a conversation with him uh, about it. And he's a hoot. I well, he come to my bar the first day I opened my bar. He was yeah. there. That's awesome. He drank like twenty four Coors Lights and drove off. I swear to God. Oh, I believe it. That's Clay yeah. Reed. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Like he didn't come out to hang out with me for the week. He literally walks in my bar. He draws he draws me a picture on a napkin. I still have it in my bar. I put it over. He drank like five hundred beers. He's like, "Well, bud, I guess I'll see you. I'm going. I don't know where I'm going, but is there anywhere sleeper? I, oh, that's yeah. I think I'm gonna pull off down the road here and take a nap and go back to Texas. I'm like, you just fucking got here. He's like. I got places to be. <laughs> That's pretty spot on. He drove all the way to Wyoming just to say hi and support me. And I, I, I appreciate that. I hope, I really like Clay Reed. Uh, I hope what he's doing is for the right reasons. Because if he's doing it for Fox, bro, heh- he's wasting his time. No, it's not for Fox, bro. Uh, he's writing a book about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. I can't that's wait cool. to read the book. It, I don't read. I hope he puts it on audio book. <laughs> he's definitely got a lot of stories, especially like that, like traveling around, which, I mean, I hope I hope to be able to do the same kind of shit someday. Just, I want to go I want to go see Steve up in you yeah, know, Wyoming, just, just fucking take off. He's like, when your bar open, ball? I'm like, it's <laughs> open in a couple of days or whatever. He's like, all right, I'll see you then. I just thought he was bullshit. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, he's a traveler now. I was like, and you know, like, I like Texas, mm-hmm. but you take a Texas cowboy and throw him up there in Wyoming, I'm yeah. just like, oh, shit. <laughs> First day my bar's going to be ripped to shit, man. Yeah. But it worked out good. Everybody loved him. And um, Sterling's been up there. Stearman hasn't made it yet. Um, it, you know, a couple times a week through the summer, people go into the park, they stop in and get pictures taken and auto- autographs. You know, everybody, like I don't desire them, but man, it makes me feel good when little yeah. kids want to yeah. talk coyote hunting and, and stuff I'm doing. And, you know, people ask me, um, I got a really cool story, but, you know, a guy, a veteran a while back, you know, man, I'd really like to get in the hunting industry. You know, well, this was a few years ago. He's, he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, dude, go to school. Go back to college. You got all the money you need, dude. They'll send you to college. Go get you a business degree or marketing or whatever. That's the best way to do this. This bullshit that we're doing don't work no more. It, like, the only reason I'm making a living doing it is because um, <laughs> I concentrate on retail. Yeah. The show used to make... I'd make $70,000 a year just shooting coyotes. Mm -hmm. That's them days are over because everybody does it for free now. And people ask me sometimes, well, why, why is it such a problem? Well, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a welder. Well, what if I opened a shop next door to you and started welding for free because it was my passion? Yeah. Well, that's different. No, it fucking ain't. No, it's the same thing. It's a business. Yeah. And, uh, and 
you know, I told this guy that I, I told him stories and he's like, I appreciate it. And I thought, well, pissed off another one. <laughs> I got an email a while back and, um, oh, I can't remember the name. I give him a hell of a plug. Anyway, he went back to school. I got this big, long email about how much I changed his life. And I didn't do it. I just told him what I would do. He right. changed his life, not me. Yeah. He went back to school, got a business degree, come back, went to the, uh, used his uh, GI or whatever the veterans do, started an armory, ammo, guns, sporting accessories, and, and one of the most successful independent gun shops. And this was a big town in, in Missouri. It was up by Kansas City. And uh, he's like, dude, my life has changed. I'm I'm not wealthy, but I'm, you know, I'm making a good yeah. living. I work every day in what I love. I get to talk to people. Yeah. And he's like, it's all because of you. And I just emailed him back. Man, I'm very proud of you. And I said, hero, I'll tell you right now, it, I didn't do this. I just told you what I would do if I could. Right. And you're somebody that could and you did it, not me. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's, and when I talk to people about the industry, that I wish they would see that side of me and not the, yeah. Well, he's just saying that because he don't want me to succeed because he don't want no competition. Listen, in my eyes, that's not how I look at people. Like I said a while ago, I have no competition. I kicked right. everybody's ass. Yeah. You know, I respect Jeff Nimnick. I respect Jeff Nimnick. He's a coyote killing some bitch. But, you know, he's he's back there. Yeah. You know, I don't work for free. Yeah. And I succeed. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, it's uh, it's just rough. Yeah. It's it's just like working at a gas station, man. I'd work at a gas station if I needed to, and I would try to be the best at it. Yeah. You know? So that's what I – man, this boltrifle.com, I keep saying that. I just <laughs> – we should never it's talk about day. it. We should have waited for chili because I'm fired up about that, dude. <laughs> it's a great name. Hell, let's go have some chili. All right, let's do it. It's you in the mood for some chili? Yeah, maybe. <laughs>